Uh, the most anticipated will be Friday mornings when we will have the manager's report brought to you by SDCCU. It's not big bank banking. It's better. And joining us right now, thanks to San Diego County Credit Union, is the manager of the San Diego Padres coming off yesterday's 6-4 to four opening day win over the San Francisco Giants. Mike Schilt is with us here on 97.3 The Fan. Mike, congratulations on the win yesterday. A really fun day for all of us out at the ballpark. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good to be with you. And it was a fun day. Guys played really well in front of a lovely, wonderful crowd and a beautiful day. Now, it was a long day for us. We had the broadcast at 6 a.m. and, and we're there the whole time. What does opening day look like for the skipper? Um, well, it's, uh, you know, it's tried to like any other game, but clearly opening day is a special day and even more special yesterday with, you know, again, a chance to remember Peter Seidler and have the moment of silence for the game and reflect on him and, you know, remind ourselves one of the reasons we, uh, you know, we're going to do this well this year. Um, but other than that, it's just try to normalize it. You know, it's, it's clearly a, a game of importance. Everybody's excited. Getting back to a home opener is, is special, but I really just want to make sure you're uh, taking care of business and dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Well, and, and you know, two, a really tough customer yesterday in Logan Webb. I mean, it, it, I tweeted yesterday, it looked like we were hitting weighted balls. I mean, you can't get barrel on that guy. And to kind of grind out a couple of runs, uh, was it was tough sledding, certainly. What do you tell your guys uh, in, in instances like that where it's like, hey, man, just is it just go up there, keep fighting, keep putting the ball in play? Because I, I got to tell you, as, as a, a longtime ob- observer myself, it did feel um, it did feel like, man, that was really really tough sledding up there against him. Yeah, he's got a good arm, you know, like you said, a heavy ball, you know, a big power sinker. Um, I was really pleased. I mean, you're going to run into good pitching. You want to be a, a great team, you got to be, be, you know, good, great, you know, pitching. This guy's a great pitcher. Um, and I was really pleased with the fact that we got better as the game went. The bats got better. Guys were communicating with each other about what they were seeing. That's really effectively a big part of us is the guys just – Seeing what he's doing, reacting to what he's doing, making adjustments if necessary to what he's doing, and talking to each other about what they're seeing using their collective baseball cues is really important. You know, for the game, you know, I thought we had a good plan. That's that's the job at Rodriguez, our hitting coach, did a great job. But the guys really, um, you know, knew what they were seeing, had some had some uh, history with him, but really just um, focused on taking better at bats every at bat. And when you're facing a guy like that, obviously you need your starter to to match him and, and keep you in the game. And you, Darvish, absolutely did that. And I thought maybe the, the key moment of the game came there in the top of the fourth inning when uh, they started the inning with two singles off of you and he came back, struck out Yastrzemski, and then had the uh, the liner back there, the, the runners, those second and third. So a chance to, to really break the game open a little bit for the Giants and that strikeout of Conforto to end the inning. Uh, talk a little bit about you, Darvish's just, just performance uh, yesterday and what you saw from him. Yeah, there was a lot of big moments in the game yesterday. You just said one that probably didn't get noticed as much, but was really big, you know, where he's in some traffic, he's, you know, you know, they got second and third, less than two outs, and he just makes really big pitches. And um, I thought he threw the ball fantastic, you know, from, from the very beginning. You know, Ahmed put a good swing on a tough pitch to give him that lead one nothing. And, you know, like you said, he was he was able to escape without any further damage. thought he threw the ball very, very well, you know, not an easy decision about when to when to bring him out, but you know, it was in the sixth inning for the first time all year. Seventy eight pitches, which, you know, later in the year that's not gonna be an issue, but I wanna make sure we're being smart as as we look at a long year. Uh and, you know, one of his pitch counts were gonna be about eighty five, so I uh, just felt like it was the time. But you threw the ball really, really well, really pleased about every aspect of how he how he competed yesterday. Talking to the uh, skipper, Mike Schilt, here on Ben and Woods this morning. And, yeah, you know, I, I talked to Ruben Niebla the other day, and I asked him, how long does it take for you guys collectively to kind of come up with the plan? And one of the the aspects of the plan so far, an interesting one, I think, for Padres fans and certainly ourselves, too, is is the usage of Johnny Brito. And he's got just electric stuff um, built up as a starter in spring training, now getting a couple of more high-leverage opportunities earlier in the season. What is the, the, the thinking behind that? Is it just – yeah, what is the thinking behind that, I guess, uh, from your guys' perspective? Well, I mean, you kind of explained it. Um, you know, it's a guy with experience in the bullpen, 
you know, successful experience over when, when he was with New York, um, comes over in the trade, is, a, you know, clearly can be a hybrid guy, was given the opportunity to start, you know, was really pushed out, um, you know, we got Dylan um, in the trade. And so we put him in a role that's a little more, he's got some experience doing, um, give him an opportunity. Like you said, big arm, loved his fastball, you know, just yesterday a couple of balls found some holes that, you know, created some opportunities for them to their credit. And, um, you know, he's, he's thrown the ball well. He's got a nice arm and those strikes and, you know, a lot of good things to like about a guy that can come out of your bullpen. It's our weekly SDCCU Managers Report with Mike Schilt here on Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. And, Mike, if you can recall after the game, what word did you use to describe Fernando Tatis Jr. going from <laughs> first to third there in the sixth inning on a little number in front of the plate? That was sexy. <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah, it, it was. Uh, um, I love that I you use a... that word because we, we all find certain baseball plays sexy as well. Oh, We're just yeah. those kind of fans. What other baseball plays do you think you might describe as, as sexy, Mike? I don't know. You kind of know it when you see it. I mean, um, uh, you know, there'll be more that'll come up that we'll, uh, we'll attach that to. But, you know, that was just a baseball play that, you know, it sets up. It's uh, it's, it's all, the, all the intangibles. You know, it's um, anticipation. It's. It's athleticism. It's it's um, aggression. It's trust. Um, it's all the different things that, that make a really special baseball play. And you know, there was actually a fair amount of them yesterday. I mean, Toddy's was very well aptly described. Um, just a worst of great baseball plays going on the pitch, full count with Crony, and you know, didn't didn't hesitate. And the thing that was even more impressive about it for me is that ball's behind him. Um, you know, it's over on the first base side. And he's going towards second, but. He was able to figure out what that looked like and make a decision. Um, you know, Jackson going first to third on the ball bogey hit was um, was really nice. Mandy going first to third. It was just really good base running plays yesterday that, for me, are a big differenti- differentiators that help you win baseball games. Now, unfortunately, you didn't you didn't cash in on that sexy play because uh, Manny just got a little bit in on the wrist there and, and floated the one to second. After that at bat, he he tried to snap the bat over his knee. Now, yeah. I don't know that anyone can ever make fun of Manny Machado. No. He's such a, a stud. But did anyone say anything in the dugout after <laughs> after that moment? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's that's just, that is a perfect perfect answer. I think you saw something I didn't. I yeah. Know. I was like, wait, what happened? Yeah. Like, what play? Yeah, that's exactly what? right. M- Mike Schilt doesn't miss anything. No, 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 no. That's exactly <laughs> right, man. Talking to the skipper, Mike Schilt here on Ben and Woods. Uh, listen, you know we talked. When we were at spring training, uh, the three of us or the four of us talked about, you know, you trying to get the best out of what you have and what you've been given as the manager. You know, A.J. Preller's job is to to put the guys on the roster. I think a lot of people, I mean, you can't really say much about what Tyler Wade's done. He's, he's done really, really well, and he's he's a grindy player, and, you know, he's really making the most of his opportunity. I We talked, though, about... You know, the young kids, and, and I'm, I'm talking, of course, about Grand Pauly, and, you know, him being on the roster, he's not going to get a ton of at-bats right now. He may need those to develop. How do you reconcile that as you move forward throughout the season? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, we you know we clearly want to take advantage of every opportunity. Tyler Wade's done a great job. He has. He's done a fantastic job. He, he's, um, you know, again, he's made baseball plays um, that, the, you know, our fan base, it's a you know, very educated, passionate fan base is aware of. Does he does a lot of little things really well. He's played, you know, very good defense um, on on most every play. Um, he's had great at bats. You know, he's got a hit in every game, at least one. You know, he scored multiple runs um, early in the season. He's run the bases really well. Um, got a big hit to right yesterday in that four run inning that that got us going after Campy's base hit. Um, he just played really, really well. You know, Rosario's played really well when he gets the opportunities against um, lefties, and he'll get a chance today against Harrison uh, to go in there. So we feel really good about that. They're holding down third, um, while Manny's still working to get back as an everyday player on the uh, on the field. Um, you know, so Paulie, I mean, you know, look, he takes great at bats. He's clearly played third. Um, just doesn't have as much experience at that position. You know, at the higher levels. Um, is still working with him, works hard every day. Clearly a guy we like. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, what, what the opportunities present themselves. 
Sure, finding the, the right spot for him. Uh, but you're talking about ABs, and I, I couldn't have been more impressed with with Camposano's yesterday. I mean, the the shortening up with two strike, two two strike hits, I believe, yesterday. Just massive, massive growth from that young man, uh, and and look good behind the dish as well. Uh, tell us about the work that he's been putting in, and and how conscious that's been to try to shorten up and and you know just put the ball in play with two strikes. Yeah, Campy's demonstrated early, which is really impressive at early stages of his career about what a professional, not only a hitter looks like, but a player looks like. He just, um, he really loves the game, studies the game, is intentional about being great at the game. And, you know, him him taking what the game gives you, you know, he's got the ability, as we've seen, to drive the ball, you know, drive the ball in the gaps out of the ballpark. But he's also got the ability to recognize, you know what, I'm in a, I'm in a battle here. Um, and, and I'm going to compete in two strikes. I'm going to figure out a way to give myself the best chance to, to drive in the run, get on base, whatever it takes in the situation. So he's also done a really nice job. He's grown a ton behind the plate, and, and uh, I'm enjoying working with him um, as our catcher. He's doing a, he's doing a really good job on all all, fa- all facets of the game. I, I've got a question. Uh, you, so you aggressively used uh, Sugar to pinch yeah. run there in uh, with a one-run lead, still middle of the game. Uh, for Jurickson, is that pulling the levers? Is that something like you you consider part of your style? Is that something we'll see going forward, or was that specific to this game and that situation? Because I know a lot of managers probably wouldn't have gone that early to their bench for a pinch runner in that situation. Uh, well, you know, you know, it's going to be a close game, which it was. Um, you know, I don't know. I just call what the situ you know di- situation dictates. I mean, Pro Pro's a, obviously a good player and has a lot of skill sets. So it's not. As I said earlier, it's more about what sugar can can bring in certain areas, um, because you know we trust Pro Far in every situation. Late in the game, doesn't matter, and every game's different, um, you know. But sugar is a plus runner, um, and this situation you're looking at, we know we're in the bottom of the fifth. So we've we've um, and that spot clearly had just come up, so you don't know how many times you're going to turn the turn the lineup back over. Um, but I know this: we got a chance you know, with less than two outs um, for the guy there to, you know, they're going to bring the infield in. We know we got a chance to go in contact with second and third or a fly ball. We're going to give ourselves a chance to, you know, continue to add on. Um, And so the situation dictated it, um, depending on if we've used anybody else during the game or what, what it looks like later in the game or how we feel about, you know, the game, how it's going to, how it's going to go. Um, you know, different decisions can be made. So, you know, we again, you you got if you think you're going to get the lead, which we did, and you're in the fifth, you got six, seventh, and eight. That spot may be coming up one more time. Um, you know, you you make the you make the call. Kind of a, a trade for for plus running and defense, maybe in in that spot. I I look, we we right. uh, we lauded it uh, because we would kind of been you know we've been saying for years, make strong moves. I mean, make strong moves. Use the guys on the bench uh, when you need to. So I great. It was a really really impressive uh, win by the fellas by yourself. You know, battling back a couple of different times. I mean, you got to remember everyone in in San Diego is still a little punch drunk from last year, <laughs> not used to seeing that fight from the guys. The the there are no more slumping shoulders when you get down a run it's a it certainly has a different look and obviously uh, wish you guys continued success and you know keep doing what you're doing and w- do you think we were asking yesterday on, on our broadcast mike we've now seen i think we've seen the same three lineups now you, you mentioned today eggy's going to be in there instead of uh, uh, tyler wade at third base was that a superstition thing or was that a matchup thing or how superstitious are you as a skipper uh no it's not superstition it's it's you know what gives the best chance to compete you know going into the game and during the game so um you know we, we faced three righties and you know felt like that was our best lineup to compete and, and to win so that's what we ride with nothing wrong with a little superstition and speaking of that uh what did bob melvin say to you when you shook hands with oh, him yeah. before the game i'm just kind of curious if you can share any part of your uh, dialogue uh we just said hello it's good to catch up and um you know he, that was about it really it was just basic formality just the just the formality i lo- i loved and and i we gotta let you i loved when you guys lined up and your players just seemed so excited that the hugs and i mean really into it i loved the the fives you were given you know hard high fives to everyone as you went down the line uh and when you were introduced as manager and i i loved that moment the whole as you said the whole pregame ceremony though with shield 
and throwing out the first pitch and, and the moment of silence was really fun. Really special day, Mike. Uh, looking forward to these conversations throughout the season. Appreciate it. Congratulations on getting that win, and let's uh, get another one tonight. Sounds great, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. There he is. Uh, Mike Schilt, our manager's report, brought to you by San Diego County Credit Union.